Could you What's give that? a could you give us an overview of the three different types <laughs> that you've got here? Because you've you've said like are these yeah. things? I'm not. What's the what are the names of them and what's They've the difference? They've got no names. These ones. Yeah. These right. are the same basic principle. I've, I'm calling it a rocket hybrid for now. It's a hybridised rocket stove. Right. So rocket stove. The principles of a rocket stove are the elbow and the insulation. I have replaced the insulation with wood chip. So the wood chip comes out through that little hatch. So that's full of wood chip. Mm -hmm. And I've knocked little holes in the bottom of the elbow. So the wood chip gives off the gas. It can't combust. The gases go through the holes. And so you have a combustion chamber and a pyrolysis chamber. And that's pyrolysis is oxygen starved. Combustion is burning in the presence of air. So this is the same as this, but that has... <laughs> instead of having lots of holes, that has a pipe for remote combustion. And this is called a top lit up draft, a T-LUD. These are my little design. These were designed by the guy who first started getting this whole biochar story into third world countries. And I'm trying to say, let's use it ourselves. Is that Paul Anderson? Um, Paul Anderson, yeah, yeah. And the really friendly, intelligent, brilliant, he's, he's there, he's, you know, amazing. Um, sm sm uh, oxygen starved fire in the bottom, just a few holes, very smoky fire. Uh, the fan, just a computer fan on this side. So the minute the sm uh, fan blowing air through these holes in the top, the minute the air hits the smoke, you get the most impressive smoke-free combustion. Really, you know, it's, it's impressive. Um, clever, but not good enough for Western use. You have to quench it with water, it's difficult to light, and then you get black hands. <laughs> uh, you do with this, but yeah, I should learn to use gloves a bit more. Sweet. Um, great. Um, there's another one called the Anilla stove, which is a similar principle to this. Tea, lad. I'll top that up with draft gasifier. It's a shame it's not going now. Little computer fan on it. You can Google those. Paul Anderson, um, in my opinion, a genius for getting the idea of cook stoves, which suck off the wood gases, and where 80 to 90 percent of the heat is in the wood gas, and leave the charcoal behind. Uh, and then you put the charcoal, mix it with your manure pile for sequestering carbon and for locking nutrients into your soil. These miniature versions you can buy as little camp stoves and they're big spreading across third world countries. Subsistence farmers bringing back their soil to fertility, holding fertility in, cleaning up our mess of carbon in the atmosphere and very efficient, very low fuel cook stoves. That's a nice big version that powers a big oven. Beautiful, very, very good demonstration of a huge amount of heat from a small amount of wood. Too fiddly for the westerners. Too difficult to light, you have to quench the charcoal, quite messy. Um, this looks like a rocket stove powering a big oven. It's not actually a rocket stove. You drop the bottom off and you fill it full of wood chip or bark or any high carbon material, straw. And then you put the bottom back on. So the wood chip, for example, is acting as an insulation as it would in a rocket stove. And there's holes in the bottom of this elbow of pipe. So as the wood chip burns, Without oxygen, pyrolysis, the smoke that it gives off goes down through these little holes so you get a rocket stove, double the heat of a normal rocket stove. You get a really big flame coming off this when it's going, when it's really hitting pyrolysis, just letting it smolder now. Um, you also empty the charcoal out after, refill with wood chip, it produces biochar. As good as the rocket stove, brilliant invention. Larry, Vice, Krantz, whoever it was. Good thing with a rocket stove, very efficient combustion and easy to capture the heat. What two good ideas? Better than a wood stove, better than open fire. This is another step forward from that. It's just as efficient as a rocket stove, just as easy to capture all the heat. That's why I'm demonstrating with big oven, which is mm -hmm. full of jacket potatoes now. Yeah. And you've got the advantage of biochar, which a rocket stove doesn't do. You empty, bit in, I've turned the insulation into a retort. Here's a miniature version going through a heat exchanger. Have a look around the back. Let's have a look at this. Yep. This, if you're going to have, look how much smoke's coming out the top of that. But anyway, if you're going to have an efficient combustion and you're going to be capturing all the heat, maybe you don't want, you don't want the heat to go into the sky. Mm -hmm. So I've bought myself a Ben Marie. I love ripping the electrics out of these things and making it intelligent. Taking all the electrics out, put a horseshoe of copper pipe in. And so just convection of the heat, the, it, the hot water in a cylinder, yeah. and firing again, it's producing biochar and it's very efficient burn. Heat rises, hot water keeps going up. 
Yeah. I can send the hot water through the band marine or straight into this tea urn. And the cold water keeps dropping down. Yep. I've just set it up just to keep itself f f filling itself. It's a demonstration of in how you can capture the heat using hot water. Amazing. You could have this going into a household copper tank. You could have that heat. Another clever thing about rocket stoves is you can send the flue gases horizontally through a thermal mass. That is one of the main features of a rocket stove that makes them intelligent. You can do the same with this. It's another way, if you're going to have an efficient burn, capture the heat. So, this is it's just like just to keep the heat in. It's a bit, it's the end of the festival, it's looking a bit ropey, we're about to dismantle it. But, yeah, um, it, no point in have, demonstrating an efficient burner if you're not going to also demonstrate efficient use of that burner. Capture all the heat. The flue gas is coming out, we have that tour, the flue gases should be cold as they come out of your flue. Yep. You don't want the conventional flue. A rocket stove alone. You can put your hand over and it's not yeah, too warm at all. Yeah, the last bit of heat, we're just keeping the kettle slightly warmer. Yeah. And have you been able to make um, well, hot brews? You're making it smoke, aren't you? They look all right, don't they? Go back to the front. <laughs> they, um, take, check it from the front again. No, not worth it. It's because of the festival's just media. Keep just keep stoking it. Um, so we've got the sign there. Just done um, little workshops on wood gas, producing wood, using wood gas. So instead of combusting, we're using pyrolysis of the wood chip, which is depriving it of oxygen to make a very smoky fire. We're burning the smoke separately in the inner combustion chamber, and we're producing biochar. I'm an organic farmer. That's what I do for a living in an area of sandy soil, high rainfall, I want biochar. So these stoves produce, uh, burn the wood gas to produce biochar, they're very efficient, you can see how smokeless they are. Um, efficiency and smokelessness, they go hand in hand. We really And um, capturing all the heat, and I'm selling the food, so it's part of a positive cycle. Growing food in biochar, cooking the food, getting a good price for selling it, and then the more I cook, the more biochar I produce. The more biochar I produce, the more fertility is locked into my field. The more fertility locked in the field, the more food I grow. And all the time, this is permanently sequestering carbon. Uh, bio, bio